Hey guys, um, this one I'm going to share a dream with you that I had several months ago. Ties in with another dream and a vision. Vision was a long time ago, six, eight months ago. Um, but so I'm going to share the dream with you and then we'll go from there. So anyhow, in this dream, I saw this land and it looked kind of like a desert, like Egypt, just flat, plain desert. But then I saw these thrones sitting there, and on each side was, what, are, what do they call those things, sphinxes or whatever they call them, those, you know, like they got the Egyptian tombs. <laughs> or outside the pyramids. <laughs> and there were people sitting on them. And they had, a, they had on crowns, but at the top of the crown was a snake <laughs> with like a viper head on the sides. And I actually saw some people, I'm just not going to name the names, A, because of sensationalism, B, just, I'm just not, not there yet, some people do. This one I'm not. But you'll get the point. And they were sending out snakes into the land. And there was a famine in the land. And the people were devastated. Being devastated by their orders. And then I saw eagles circling around and they would eyeball one of the snakes that were going out in the land and they would swoop down and pick it up and carry it off. But they couldn't get to the thrones where these people were sitting on. They were too powerful. And that's what's happening in this land of America today, guys. But the dream, the vision I had was about the eagles and how they are being blinded by a serpent, by the enemy. But to, to get the full, because it's too long, vision streams together, um, you'll have to email me at jesusaliveinamerica at gmail.com. And on, I need to just give me your email address. I'm not gonna, you won't get anything. And if you know my computer skills, I couldn't populate a list if I wanted to. I'm not gonna keep it. I will keep my word on that. I just send you the email and not ask for anything. You're not gonna get nothing else. Just the visions and the dreams. Or if you wanna correspond and ask for something else or talk, yes, that'll be different. But as far as this, no, simple, cut it off, won't get a bunch of junk mail, won't ever see anything else from me. Because I know that can be very intrusive. So, but the faces that I saw, but anyhow, it correlates to these storms that are coming to America pick one right now. It's kind of like the whack-a-mole thing with the enemy. It was Korea. It was Iran. The Black Lives Matter. It was the coronavirus, big one, seemingly. Um, the political Russia collusion garbage. The I'm not politicizing any of this, guys, because those are big idols, too. Even our president, he's become an idol. Everybody, you don't hear about Jesus. You hear about is President Trump's gonna do this, Con Congress did that, they did this, they did that, somebody did this, somebody did that. All this hate, divisiveness, fake media, fake news. But let me get back to the dreams and then we'll go into that a little bit. But in these dreams, it was because of the divisiveness and the spirit that's behind it. But they were 
leaders, governors, mayors, judges, Congress, all jockeying for power. You don't care, really. The mayor of New York City didn't give a rat's, you know what, about the police. Well, guys, all this divisiveness, everybody's mad, arguing, control. If we don't take this country back through prayer, Joel's army, arise and shine. 5 a.m. in the morning time, God. That's what you're being real adamant about me. It's time to weep and pray between the porch and the altar. It's not going to get better. The economy's not coming back. Not going back to normal. There is not a normal. We're in a spiritual warfare. Guys, if you saw the whole, both dreams and the visions together, and I, I can't change it. This is the vessel God created me at. Read one of my messages is Matthew 20. We're all the same, guys. I'll give Bill real, real brief about this because I want this to be a short message. But vessels for honor or dishonor. But take vessels. Okay. One was natural, one was in prayer. That I got gas can, milk jug, and a plastic tote. In our garage. Well, we store stuff in the plastic tote, the pool, or whatever, dog food in one of them, keep, you know, environments out um, if we have the garage door open because we live in a Dallas, but still there's a lot of woody, woody area around us. So we have had environment problems before. Possums and just different things that would come in the garage looking for the food, my dog food. Milk is in the milk jug, it's in the refrigerator, and gas is in a storage shed for my lawnmower. Well, I'm not going to put the gas can in the refrigerator. I'm not going to store the milk in the container outside in the storage shed, I mean outside in the garage, because it'll spoil. I'm not going to try to put the storage, the storage tub in the refrigerator. I'm not going to pour milk in the gas can. This could go on and on. But they all have certain purposes. They're all made out of plastic. They're all vessels little different colors they all have a specific purpose but i like a cold glass of milk i like my lawn cut and i like my, my dog food not to be eaten by other animals or my poop kids grandkids pool stored or whatever they're all necessary i need them all they all kind of have the same value in different areas and then the second part of this because i'm getting to something about this about the value we all have the same value. And it is scriptural. It's in Matthew 20. And many others. But I was sitting there in prayer and the Lord said, Steve, what do you do when you go to the store? I was like, okay, Lord, well, I'll get up, grab my keys, walk to the door, go to my car, start the car, drive the end of the street. Depending upon which store I go to, I go to the left or to the right, where, depending where I'm going. It's like, okay, well, your legs walked into the car, but they couldn't start the ignition. Your hands had to. When you got to the end of the street, your hands and your feet and your legs couldn't tell you which way to go. Your brain did. So that's the body of Christ, guys. May look a little different some. All vessels made for the master's use if we're getting our answers in prayer and our direction in prayer and seeking him for direction that's why the 5 a.m. morning prayer because you know what guys not just this country but the world but this country is in pretty pretty serious stuff and there is a storm coming okay more than one, multiple storms. Already been a, quite a few of them, would you, six months ago, if I would've said coronavirus, would you even know what I was talking about? Me neither, probably. I only hear a little bit about it on the 
fake news, but sorry, but so there's a power struggle here, guys. And it's not the Democrats versus the Republicans, Nancy Pelosi versus Donald Trump. I lied all that kind of garbage. You don't hear about Jesus. It's going to be about Jesus. And we're going to get the answers and solutions in prayer. Whether you want to hear it or not, whether you want to be preached to or not, it's coming through prayer because every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's telling you guys, people, me included, we're not getting it in prayer. If God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word are not our source, it's crumbling down, coming to naught. So, but these are warnings, guys. Look around. Man, we're one step away from the military having to take over because there's going to be no police, if there even is a military. In the military could be Russia. I don't know, guys. You know, that's one of my messages. Lean not on your own understanding. Our understanding, we're still trying to figure out who shot JFK. And you hear everything from the CIA to the Marilyn Monroe to the, all kinds of conspiracy plots and theories and stuff and people argue about it still 50, from 50, 60 years ago. Warren Commission, days, months, weeks of reports, page after page. I'm no telling how much money they spent at Congress to do it. Not even about the money, but a lot of effort went into it, and nobody still believes it. That's our understanding. Guys, you want understanding? You want wisdom from above? See you at 5 in the morning tomorrow for prayer. I'll poke my head out. My address is different than yours. Different street. Same God. Same Jesus. Same Holy Ghost. Same Word. He sees. So I'll see you there. Good God will see you there. So get up with me. And, and I get it. You may not be able to. You might not be an early bird or whatever. Or you may not have the availability to. You know, there's people that work nights. I mean, or whatever. You pray at night. It, it's, it's about the prayer. But he's telling me to be adamant to this nation that 5 a.m. is a time of prayer to weep and pray between the porch and the altar, to cry out to God. None of these popcorn prayers, guys, that hit the ceiling and fall right back down on your head. Serious prayers, guys. We're not going to win this by taking a stand. We're going to win this by taking a knee. Not like the NFL yahoos do and you know, they're just a bunch of idle, overpaid idiots, anyhow, mostly, really. We pay millions of dollars to watch people chase a pigskin ball. <laughs> and call it entertainment. Sorry, guys. All these idols are coming down. <laughs> And he's, you know, like I, the last that I'm going to say, look at my message about we, we lost, we've missed the story of Daniel and the lion's den because we think of Daniel and the saving and how he wasn't killed and how he wasn't eaten and how great and awesome God is. And he is. He's awesome. But what did he want out of it? What was it? God, there's always unto something with the Lord. We've got a plan, guys. Jesus knew the cross way before the cross. God knows the beginning from the end. He's the help of the mega. But he's unto something. But what he was unto in that was he, Daniel was obedient, praying. But it wasn't to save his life. He didn't know that anyhow, that that's what they were going to do. But and even when he was in the lion's den, he still was praying. But It was unto God wanted to change the nation. When the king came to Daniel, are you there type thing, you know? Oh, king live forever. 
He made a decree that all stood bowing to him and this, to, to worshiping him that they were going to serve the God of Daniel. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, same, the same thing. Fiery furnace, the hotter than, hotter than blazes, and then some. Again, we don't, we don't want you anything. Even if Jesus does it, we know he's able. Same thing at the decree. At the end. So we want our nation to turn back. To God. We need to pray. We're not going to win it by barking at people on YouTube, Facebook, in the streets, killing people, whatever. Crazy stuff defunding the police it's just sheer stupidity guys it's insulting our intelligence <clears throat> it makes no sense because it's demonic that's why it makes no sense it makes plenty of sense in the spirit but no sense in the natural this covid virus makes no sense in the natural because it but it does in the spiritual because it's a power power trip by these people that the enemy's using. Could be vessels of dishonor, could be tares. I don't know. Maybe they're going to get saved. We need to pray for them. I don't know. If that's what if we don't start praying, getting direction from God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. We're not going to know what to do, and then it's going to be too late. Very, very important and imperative, guys, that we get on our knees and seek God to turn as a nation. No more mealy mouth preaching. One preacher I used to sit under actually was an all black, all black, an all black church for six years. Imagine that, old white guy that voted for Trump, sitting at eighteen years old in an all black church. And one day I'm listening to The Who and Led Zeppelin, and the next day I'm listening to five hours worth of worship and black gospel music. Big change. But I didn't care. I was just glad to be saved. But he used to say, you, know, you preachers, you got a $600 message, and a $600 briefcase and a $1 message. <laughs> he used to say some really good stuff. Great guy. Really. Long story, but, you know, that's in some of my other messages, too, but. Time to pray, guys, and weep between the porch and the altar as a nation, because there's strength in that. Love you guys, um, but these people are playing us, and they're on a power trip, and they don't care who dies and who lives. Jesus does. God does. Because that was his son. So are we going to just cowardly take it, let, let go? Line up for a shot or whatever? The mark of the beast? We kind, you know, we kind of did, guys. Not kind of, we did. Where was the church? Where's the church and all this? Hiding to fight another day? Baloney. Today's the day, guys. A little bit of Holy Ghost backbone. Most most of them don't have it. We've been disconnected. We don't have the power that they that they say they do, or this wouldn't happen the way that it happened. There's no power there. The world sees that. The enemy sees that. The devil sees that. Now the government sees that. They already knew that. But boom. Not about civil liberties, guys. It's about where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Are we going to be, let the enemy steal, kill, and destroy? Are we coming back and saying, not today, devil? Talk is cheap. Time to take action, guys. And that action would be your prayer morning and your early morning when no one's up, your wife husband, your kids, you don't turn on the cell phone, you don't turn on CNN, you don't do that first, maybe a coffee, that's about it, and maybe I'm idolizing that because I love coffee, maybe you don't even need to do that, I don't know, 
about that one. But I just like coffee. So, but don't be distracted. But be attracted to the Holy Ghost and the gifts from above and the wisdom from above and what God's saying. He wants you to listen. Love you guys. Um, if we don't take authority that he's given us, you could just walk out your door right now and see where the authority is. And we're one step away from them locking your door. Basically. Throwing away the key. And not caring. They'll get a few idiots to vote for them and pay, pay their way, maybe. That's what they're hoping for. I don't know. Not political, though, guys. It sounds like it, but it's not. It's not the Democrats versus the Republicans, like I said. It's God versus the devil. Good versus evil. Jesus versus sin. Because that's why he died. To wipe that out. So... I'm going to end with this. God knows your name. God knows your sin and calls you by your name. The devil knows your name and calls you by your sin. Why are we going to live in all this fear and stuff? Okay, guys, I am going to end with this. Here you go. I just bought a... I didn't buy it. I just got a mask. Masks are mandatory, okay? So here's mine. I'm going to start wearing this. And actually, it's probably prophetic. But it's comical. It's so. It starts with an A, but it's probably not preacher friendly, so. <laughs> that it's laughable. But why are so many people grieved over it? Because it's a spirit of the devil behind it. Demons, the Antichrist, so many things. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. And let's knock these people off of their thrones. Let's dethrone the enemy. Prayer, fasting, dedication, being Joel's army, that great outpouring. Are you in? Or are you out? Love you guys. Cool glasses, huh? Dollar Tree. One buck.